If there are mysterious creatures that actually exist in our world, the best place for their habitat is believed to be the Congo. Half of the territory of this country is covered with dense tropical forests with rich flora, where it is very easy to remain unnoticed. In this video, you will be introduced to the most horrifying discoveries in the Congo that can scare anyone. Enjoy! Cobalt is one of the most sought-after minerals used in the production of heat-resistant, super-hard, and other coatings. The Democratic Republic of Congo DRC, is the world leader in cobalt production, but few have considered the conditions under which it is mined. Thousands of people in Congo have migrated to remote areas in the hopes of finding employment with high wages. However, the mining of the stones that yield cobalt has turned into a form of modern slavery, with only the mine owners making significant profits. Approximately 30% of the minerals are extracted in small-scale mines, where human rights are violated. Under the scorching sun, children work, many people suffer injuries, and even die in dangerous underground tunnels. This is why human rights organizations are increasingly concerned about companies engaged in mineral extraction without the use of proper machinery, which goes against safety protocols. However, stopping this production is not easy. Unfortunately, the majority of Congolese people live in abject poverty and are willing to sacrifice their health for any form of income. According to Darwin's theory, monkeys evolved into humans through a lengthy process of evolution. Our closest relatives are chimpanzees, with over 375 different species identified. The average height of a male chimpanzee is around 150 centimeters. However, it turns out that in Congo, much larger individuals exist. A sensational discovery of a new species of chimpanzees was reported by National Geographic in 2003. The article stated that in the Bili Forest in northern Congo, monkeys resembling hybrids of gorillas and chimpanzees were found. Congolese locals described these massive chimpanzees growing up to 180 centimeters in height. They are incredibly strong and capable of killing even lions. The new species of primates have a gorilla-like physique, walk on two legs, and build their nests on the ground instead of in trees. At the same time, they do not live alongside gorillas and their diet is closer to that of chimpanzees. The first scientist to encounter the Bili chimpanzees was primatologist Shelley Williams. She recounted that four very large male primates approached her in the forest. They seemed ready to attack, but instead came closer, carefully examined her, and then left. Interestingly, local residents also reported that the behavior of the Bili chimpanzees differs from that of other monkeys. While male chimpanzees are often aggressive when encountering humans, the Bili chimpanzees observe hunters closely and then retreat, as if recognizing them as kin. Currently, scientists are engaged in detailed research on these chimpanzees and are considering various theories about their nature. They could be large individuals of the chimpanzee species, hybrids of gorillas and chimpanzees, or potentially a new species of great apes. In the latter case, their discovery would be a significant zoological finding of the 21st century. According to Congolese legends, a terrifying reptile inhabits the swamps near Lake Likawala, a creature one should never encounter. Its body length reaches 15 meters. It hides in the marsh and waits for its prey, then leaps out and grabs its victim with its enormous jaws. Local residents say that Mahamba does not resemble any currently known animals or reptiles, comparing it to other creatures such as Nkoli or Nguma Monain. Based on detailed descriptions of the creature, some cryptozoologists speculate that Mahamba is a freshwater relic of mosasaurs which were thought to have become extinct by the end of the Cretaceous period. Other scientists believe that this monster may be a descendant of prehistoric crocodiles such as Deinosuchus or Sarcosuchus. Although no one has ever seen Mahamba, the indigenous people of the Bobangi tribe still believe that it inhabits specific areas of Likawala, and they avoid those places at all costs. Megaliths are scattered across almost every corner of the earth. The most famous site with such structures is Stonehenge in England. Africa is no exception and can also boast astonishing patterns made of huge stones. The origins and purposes of megaliths remain unknown. Scientists are most amazed by the fact that they were built during an era of the most primitive tools making their construction nearly impossible. Therefore, megaliths are often associated with extraterrestrial civilizations. However, there is still a lack of evidence to support this theory. Thus, the question of where these intricate structures came from continues to baffle modern humans. 
In 1959, Belgian Colonel Remy van Leerde witnessed a snake whose existence is hard to believe. It happened when Leerde was flying over the jungles in the Katanga region in a helicopter. Upon returning to the airbase, the colonel described the appearance of the snake. Its back and sides were colored green and brown, while the underside had a milky hue. Most astonishingly, the estimated length of the reptile, according to Lierda, was about 15 meters. Seeing the snake of such incredible size, the colonel couldn't believe his eyes and ordered the pilot to fly over it again. When the helicopter flew over the snake once more, it raised its head to a height of at least 3 meters, as if warning of a possible attack. At that point, the colonel ordered an immediate return to the base, and with the help of an onboard camera, he managed to capture images of this giant, providing evidence of its existence. After careful examination of the photographs, scientists speculated that the snake could be either a mutated giant African rock python or a new species of snake inhabiting inaccessible areas for humans. Alternatively, it might be a descendant of an ancient Eocene snake. Once again, the photographs of this snake demonstrate that the tropical forests of Congo hide numerous mysterious creatures. It is quite possible that some species of animals, extinct millions of years ago, managed to survive here. In the mid 19th century, stories circulated among travelers about the largest gorillas in the world that inhabited the mountainous regions of Congo. It was only in 1902 that German Captain Oskar von Beringa became the first person to encounter such primates. Afterward, this species of primates was named Beringa gorillas. Beringe gorillas grow up to 2 meters tall and weigh over 200 kilograms. Since these primates were poorly studied, scientists made every effort to learn more about them. The habitat of these gorillas was limited to the inaccessible slopes of six dormant volcanoes in the Virunga mountain range. Studying Baringa gorillas was extremely challenging, and it became even more difficult after the onset of the Civil War in 1967. However, American primatologist Diane Fossey decided to continue researching the primates. She also organized numerous conservation efforts to protect gorillas from poachers, but tragically, she was killed by poachers in 1953. Thanks to Diane Fossey, the rare species of Beringe gorillas were preserved, and they now inhabit only the National Park in Uganda and the Virunga Volcanic Mountains. Their population numbers around 1,000 individuals, and their existence remains threatened. The people of Congo believe in the existence of another terrifying creature known as Zaire or Dinganek. According to Congolese legends, this monster inhabits the rivers and lakes of West Africa. The Dingonek grows up to 3.5 meters in height and has a square head with a long horn, powerful fangs, a saber-like tail with a venomous stinger at the tip, and its skin is covered in tough scales with a leopard-like pattern. The Dingonek fiercely guards its territory and attacks crocodiles, hippos, and even humans. In addition to legends, there is a documented account of an encounter with this creature resembling a manticore. In 1907, African explorer John Alfred Jordan heard stories about the Dingonek. Initially skeptical, he was offered the opportunity by local inhabitants to explore the Magori River. It was there that Jordan witnessed the actual monster emerging from the water. The explorer described it as a creature approximately four meters long, covered in scales with a long tail, armed with fangs and tusks. Jordan admitted that upon seeing it, he immediately thought of walruses. The encounter frightened the explorer, prompting him to shoot the Dingonek in the neck, after which the creature disappeared into the water. Terrified, the people fled the area and never returned. Italian filmmaker and explorer Attilio Gatti was incredibly fascinated by African culture. He thoroughly studied not only the nature of Congo, but also the culture of its indigenous people. Gatti became the first person to film a documentary featuring Africans. He immersed himself so deeply in the indigenous society that he became one of them. He was told legends, allowed to participate in festivities and hunting, and even took photographs. The most famous photograph depicted Gatti with pygmy hunters and a captured gorilla. Throughout his scientific career in Africa, he collected a collection of 35,000 photographs, made a film, and wrote wrote 30 books about the country. One day, the Africans told Gatti about certain caves that were very dangerous to descend into. According to legend, evil spirits dwell in them and kill every unwelcome guest. This story greatly intrigued Gatti and his team. At the time when they were supposed to embark on an expedition to verify if the caves were indeed connected to mysticism, the explorer fell ill. 
Therefore, it was decided that his team would enter the cave instead. Surprisingly, none of those who entered ever returned. What happened to the people inside remains unknown, but after the incident, Gatti decided never to test the stories of the people of Congo again. In today's video, I've talked a lot about the incredible sized inhabitants of Congo, but most of them are rarely seen. So now, let's take a look at the largest insects found in Congo. Let's start with the Goliath beetle, one of the largest beetles in the world. Adult Goliath beetles can grow up to 11.5 centimeters, and their weight ranges from 50 to 100 grams. And here's a rather unpleasant yet impressive sight, the larva of this beetle. The giant African millipede, unlike the centipede, is not dangerous to humans and is completely non-aggressive. Moreover, the millipede adapts well to captivity and quickly becomes docile. However, not many would want to hold such a creature in their hands, as they have a rather unpleasant appearance. Among the diplopod millipedes, the giant African millipede holds the record, with a body length of 38.5 centimeters and a thickness of 2 centimeters. Another remarkable insect from Congo is the giant praying mantis, which can grow up to 17 centimeters in length. I believe that few of you would want to encounter these insects in the tropics. In the small town of Manono, in the Tanganyika province, local residents have discovered unique stones. According to their accounts, these minerals possess an open electric potential. To prove the uniqueness of their find, people started recording videos that quickly spread across the internet and went viral. The footage shows powerful sparks being generated when the stones are rubbed together, resembling welding. In another video, a person manages to light up a light bulb using one of these remarkable stones. All the found stones are dark colored and have a glossy surface. They are likely composed of a previously unstudied mineral. Some users even speculated that these stones are the real life vibranium, the fictional metal from Marvel Comics used to create Captain America's shield and the Black Panther's suit. Currently, Scientists assert that these videos are manipulated, as minerals are not capable of releasing the electrons necessary for storing and generating a charge. However, these stones have not been thoroughly studied yet, and it's possible that the residents of Congo have indeed stumbled upon an unknown mineral. Another mysterious monster believed to exist by the people of Congo is called Emela Intuka. According to local residents, it is a large freshwater creature resembling a rhinoceros, with a massive body and a huge horn that allows it to kill elephants and other large animals with a single blow. Unlike a rhinoceros, Emela Ntuka has a relatively long neck surrounded by folds resembling those of a crocodile. The first reports of this fantastic creature appeared in 1913, when explorer Hans Schomburg collected stories from the Kla tribe in Liberia, after which he published an article dedicated to the astonishing Emela Ntuka. In the early 21st century, a resident of Congo claimed to have killed a representative of this unknown species and kept its horn as a memento. Shortly after that, a documentary film about the enigmatic Emela Ntuka was made. Despite being an herbivore, the creature killed anything that crossed its path. For example, near the Kala tribe's settlement, a dead elephant was found with its side pierced by something sharp. The locals believe it was a victim of Emela Ntuka. According to the descriptions provided by the Clay tribe, this mysterious elephant killer closely resembled herbivorous dinosaurs from the Ceratopsid family that lived during the Cretaceous period. Cryptozoologists believe that individual members of this family managed to survive to the present day and hide in the dense forests of Congo. Giant, horrifying spiders are often seen in horror movies and video games. Just imagine if such two-meter monsters actually existed. The Baka tribe of Congo believes that monsters they call Jabafofi, which literally means giant spider, inhabit their forests. Jabafofi gained fame in 2008 after being mentioned in the series Monster Quest. However, knowledge of them dates back to the late 19th century. In 1890, missionary Arthur Sims, who arrived with his team at Lake Nyasa, noticed a web of incredible size that was believed to belong to a very large spider. Sims and other members of his team decided to take a closer look at the sticky web. Several people got entangled in it, and as soon as that happened, several spider specimens descended from the forest and attacked the people. The spiders were of monstrous size, with a height exceeding 100 centimeters. Another encounter with Jabba Fofi occurred in 1938. 
The Lloyd couple was driving on a forest road in Zimbabwe when they spotted a spider the size of a large cat. The spider resembled a gigantic tarantula, but had longer legs. In 1980, researcher William Gibbons became interested in the spiders from Congo and embarked on an expedition. The scientist spoke to representatives of the Baka tribe, who assured him that these creatures were real and provided more details about them. It turns out that Jabafofi are brown spiders with a length ranging from 100 to 120 centimeters. They prefer to dwell in caves and spin webs in the forests, where their prey, small mammals and birds, gets trapped. The eggs of these giants are the size of peanuts, from which small individuals hatch, colored in yellow and purple. According to the Baka tribe, the spiders are very dangerous, and their nests are always destroyed, which is why the population of Jabafofi is now extremely small. Two hundred forty-three million years ago, our planet was inhabited by ancient animals, dinosaurs, which numbered over 1,000 species. Between the Triassic and Jurassic periods, about 201 million years ago, all dinosaurs became extinct. The exact cause of their mass extinction is unknown, and there are several hypotheses, including climate change and the impact of a giant asteroid. Currently, we only know about dinosaurs from informational sources, but what if some of their species survived and we could see them firsthand? Legends of some cultures tell stories of creatures that closely resemble dinosaurs, such as the Loch Ness Monster and Ogopogo. The people of Congo also believe in a similar creature and call it Mokale Mbembe, which means the one that stops the flow of rivers. According to local residents, the Mbembe inhabits Lake Tele and its surroundings. The creature is active during the day, feasting on ripe fruits and leaves, and hides in the deep waters of the lake at night. Despite being an herbivorous animal, Mokale Mbembe is not friendly and shows aggression towards anyone who stands in its way. Therefore, people have long been afraid of encountering it. Nevertheless, there have been many eyewitnesses who claim to have seen this creature. According to their accounts, Mokalembembe has smooth, brown-gray skin. It is the size of an adult elephant and has a very long neck, a single large tooth or horn, and a long, scaly tail like an alligator. There have been numerous expeditions in search of this unknown species, but proving its existence has not been successful, although huge tracks were indeed found on the shores of Lake Tele. Interestingly, when shown images of various animals and dinosaurs, the locals pointed to sauropods, calling them Mokalembembe. This led cryptozoologists to speculate that Mokalembembe might be the only species of dinosaurs that managed to survive to this day. Undoubtedly, it is strange to believe that large flying dinosaurs have survived and remain so well hidden from our sight that there is no evidence of their existence. But the people of Congo are convinced that ancient creatures truly exist in their forests, one of which they call Kongamato. In the local language, Kongamato translates to overwhelmer of boats. According to legend, these massive flying creatures with wingspans ranging from four to seven meters live near swamps and rivers. When they spot fishermen, they become aggressive and attack them. The first encounter with this creature occurred in 1932. According to the American zoologist Ivan Sanderson, he was attacked by a toothed monster. Surprisingly, he managed to escape by jumping into a river and shooting at the creature with his revolver. However, the flying creature was unaffected by the bullets and simply flew away, frightened. In 1956, engineer Brown reported an encounter with two flying creatures near Lake Bangwulu in present-day Zambia. From a distance, they resembled giant eagles but had heads and tails unlike any bird. According to his account, these strange creatures had long, thin tails and narrow heads. According to local residents' stories, in 1957, a patient with a severe chest wound was admitted to the hospital in Fort Roseberry. Later, the man told doctors that he was attacked by a real monster with large wings, teeth, and claws in the swamps of Bangwulu, unlike anything he had ever seen before. When asked to depict the creature, he drew something resembling a pterosaur. There is no concrete evidence confirming the existence of Kongamato, but based on the accounts of eyewitnesses, cryptozoologists speculate that all these people encountered descendants of pterosaurs. The first mystical monolith was discovered in November 2020 in the United States, specifically in Utah. After that, 
shiny monoliths started appearing one after another in Germany, the United Kingdom, Romania, and other countries. In February 2021, a mysterious monolith appeared in the capital of Congo, Kinshasa. Unlike the Europeans, the local residents were not thrilled about this structure and viewed it with suspicion. The city authorities decided to guard the monolith until it could be thoroughly investigated. The people of Congo are quite superstitious, and some believe that the structure belonged to dark forces. Therefore, attempts were made to destroy and even burn the monolith. Efforts to determine who installed these structures have been unsuccessful, and no traces of their transportation have been found either. UFO enthusiasts and some internet users have linked the mysterious monoliths to the strange objects found in images of Mercury, Phobos, and Mars, leading them to conclude that they are the work of extraterrestrials. In 2021, local residents accidentally discovered that 90% of the rock in the Luhiji Mountain in the South Kivu province consists of gold. The news quickly spread, and thousands of impoverished individuals flocked to the foot of the mountain. People began extracting the precious ore with shovels, picks, and even their bare hands. Surprisingly, even with the most primitive methods of gold panning, they were able to obtain a significant amount of gold. However, the happiness of the local residents was short-lived. Authorities prohibited access to the mountain and even decided to register all those who managed to extract gold so that it could be returned to the state treasury. Congo is a country rich in mineral resources. It has deposits of diamonds, gold, oil, tin, tungsten, tantalum, and uranium ore. However, all these riches have had no positive impact on the well-being of the local population. To this day, the Democratic Republic of Congo remains one of the poorest countries in the world. Approximately 96% of the population lacks access to basic necessities such as healthcare, electricity, and even running water. That concludes everything for now. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. Your engagement is the best reward for me. Thank you for your attention. See you soon. Goodbye.